Hey everybody, Matty here with Altcoin Buzz. Happy Sunday, hope you're having a great weekend. Hey, look, I thought it was time for a haircut. I don't like going to the hairdresser, the barber, whatever, and uh, having like such a small trim that people barely even notice what's happened. It's like, if, I, if I'm if i feeling like a change of pace, it's gotta be very abrupt. It's gotta be very sudden. Came out a little bit shorter than uh, maybe I would have imagined, but uh, it'll grow back out soon, I suppose. Hope you're doing well. Look, the price of Bitcoin, is up, the price of Bitcoin is down. Uh, different market factors are influencing it right now. As you can see, the market is down overall, but then again, Bitcoin is up over the course of these last 24 hours. We're not too concerned. We don't wanna to be too myopic here and worry about, oh, 34, 35, 36, 37. It's gonna go up, it's gonna go down. Volatility in this space is something that's just, you can take that for granted. Volatility will continue, whether that's to the downside or the upside, hopefully the upside, but that's the name of the game. Here's our perspective on the particular developments of these last few days. So, China FUDs, you sell. China buys, Elon FUDs, you sell, Elon buys. It's hard to prove some of these points here because we don't necessarily have the tools or the forensics to be able to investigate with like that level of resolution that would be ideal. But this is what's happening right now. We're seeing uptrends over the course of, you know, very relatively small scales, like 24 hour uptrends that are looking promising. And then some, oh, absolutely random piece of news comes out and busts all the momentum that we're experiencing. And then prices crash, and then they pick back up for another day, maybe another couple of days, and then another piece of FUD, seemingly unrelated, comes out, and the cycle repeats. Of course, we have the Bitcoin conference happening in the background that I think, kind of in a vacuum, would have been extremely positive for the space. So many positive speakers and positive messaging. People that are there include Michael Saylor, of course, Max Kaiser. And check out the video that I made on Friday. This is kind of spoiling some of the fun from that event that I feel otherwise would have gotten a lot of positive press. Like attendance is through the roof, record-breaking attendance, uh, lines, you know, like spilling out onto the streets for blocks and blocks and blocks. People just can't get in everything way over capacity. So I don't know, look, different people have been expressing this message, but clearly there's a lot of positivity from a bottom up sense in this space. The groundswell is real. It's just a question of, are you buying into the China FUD? Are you accepting what Elon Musk has to say when he FUDs the market? Probably intentionally so. In fact, we have this write up from a couple of days ago, the 4th of June by Martin Young on altcoinbuzz.io, of course, Bitcoin, Elon Musk's true intentions. Elon Musk could be playing the long game with Bitcoin, with Bitcoin rather, and renewable energy generation. Now, I've talked about in the past how you have very prominent investors such as Michael Burry, who have less and less confidence in what it is Tesla is doing. The important point is that they're not just an auto manufacturing company. Yes, they make electric vehicles, but that is relatively unimportant as far as their bottom line, as far as the revenue that EVs generate for them. Don't forget they're into battery manufacture, they're into solar panel manufacturing, as well as development R&D in that field. And they're also in the business of offering energy credits, carbon credits and energy offsets to other companies, to other auto manufacturers that are not yet in the electric vehicle space. And that's actually their primary bread and butter. The argument that Michael Burry is making when he talks about shorting Tesla to the tune of a half billion dollars is the fact that, look, all of these other companies are eventually going to be getting in to electric vehicles. And so that's going to be tougher and tougher as time goes by for Tesla to you know, compete. Their competitive advantage is going to be diluted as time goes by. Another main crux that, of this article that Martin brings up here is this superb thread, a lengthy and very technical thread here by Croissant ETH. So Elon Musk had uh, has had rather a big impact on crypto recently and because some of his actions have been a bit unconventional, I was inspired to dig a little bit deeper to find out what exactly is his so-called end game and what I found does not disappoint. I'll compile all of the info below. This is a very long thread, so certainly not to get into even most of it, we can only really present it at a superficial level. But skipping to the end, um, first of all, I do encourage you to read through the whole thing. I'll link to it in the description, of course, below. But the main idea here, a couple of important points are made. That's actually quite a long thread, as you can see. So here's the recap. So this is from a few days ago, by the way. Tesla invests $1.5 billion into Bitcoin. 
Elon says Tesla will accept Bitcoin. Elon admits Tesla runs their own Bitcoin nodes. That's actually a very important detail. Tesla stops accepting Bitcoin, setting environmental concerns for mining. ARK Invest, a fund holding massive amounts of Tesla, releases solar Bitcoin mining paper. That's not something that's getting a lot of press coverage, but it's an extremely important detail. Continuing, included in the research are specific use cases for Tesla. ARK Invest buys $20 million worth of Bitcoin. Tesla profits from renewable energy credits will dry out soon, as I mentioned a moment ago, forcing them to look for other ways to monetize excess power. And finally, Tesla power walls regularly run into excess energy. So here's the idea. With a simple GPU mining Bitcoin, power walls could monetize energy and settle transactions a lot faster than traditional, traditionally rather possible. Elon's goal potentially is therefore to create a self-sustaining colony and ecosystem right on Mars that is I guess at a macro level, the idea Starlink could enable Tesla consumers to begin running their own Bitcoin node free of Internet downtime. So the contention here by Croissant ETH is this idea that Elon Musk is playing the long game. He wants to effectively create the possibility for miners of Bitcoin, for holders of Bitcoin to create their own nodes using Starlink. We cannot really even begin to confirm or deny this kind of thing. It's it's not wild speculation, but it's very speculative just because we don't have all the information. However, I think it's a great argument. Again, a very long, very detailed, very technical thread, but one that is worth reading, at least in my opinion. Check it out. I'll link to it in the description below. By the way, guys, I forgot to mention, speaking of croissant ETH and Ethereum, we're giving away $50 worth of Ethereum at the end of this video to one lucky winner. So be sure to stay tuned for that. See, in fact, if you have won. Moving right along here, here's another thread that I thought was quite interesting in case you're concerned that, you know, this is the end. Elon Musk has said some bad stuff. Therefore, we're definitely in a bear market now. The bull market is over, right? If that's your concern, if that's something that you're realistically, um, you know, I, I guess that's realistically troubling you, take a step back, take a look at some of these analyses, very macro level analyses, plot Bitcoin in terms of its performance in this last bull cycle against previous bull cycles and do so with a mind and with an eye for time that has gone by since having. I think you'll find that the case for an extended bull market is stronger than the case for a newly emerging bear market. You can check out this link as well, Equinometrics on Twitter. For now, Bitcoin remains stuck in a drag down, in a drawdown rather, that has lasted 53 days and bottomed 53% below the latest all-time high. That's a big one if you compare it to Bitcoin history. But all assets have to deal with that. So let's put those Bitcoin corrections in context. Time for a thread. Here's another one you can check out. I'll include this in the description below. This is our point of view, not financial advice, but this is how we see things at Altcoin Buzz IO on Twitter. Bitcoin is not a short term solution. And fiat, on the flip side, is not a long term solution. But altcoins like Ethereum, Binance Coin, Polkadot, Uniswap, Cardano, Chainlink, Engine, Matic, and Quant are looking juicy for both the short and long term. Not financial advice, but those are some of our favorites, no doubt some of your favorites as well. And here's a little bit of news that nobody's been talking about. Nobody has even mentioned this because again, all the headlines are sensationalized to a hyperbolic degree to just ridiculous, absurd levels, mostly focusing on the negative, mostly focusing on the FUD, fear, uncertainty, doubt. That's unfortunate, but that's the reality of headline news. That's the reality of the news cycle. Uh, that's what, get cl what gets clicks, right? Um, unfortunately, it would seem. But here's a very positive piece of news that very few people are talking about. It's monumental. It's groundbreaking. Check this out. El Salvador, which is a country, as you know, in Central America, with a population of about 6.5 million people, is trying to be the first sovereign nation to make Bitcoin a legal tender. Only long-term holders will see how mega bullish this is. Short-term people are still only concerned about Elon's tweets, as I mentioned a moment ago. And don't get me wrong, this is getting some coverage. And by the way, everything right now is kind of being proposed. So this is at the level of a proposal, but it's coming from the top. El Salvador president wants Bitcoin as legal tender. Now, you know, far be it for me to launch into the politics of El Salvador. Um, sometimes I talk about American politics just because 
that's actually something that interests me. I follow American politics closely. I know nothing about, you know, Central American politics, so I'm not even going to attempt <laughs> a political analysis here. Um, if you know something about the president of El Salvador that I don't, President Nayib Bukele, um, please, you know, share your information, share your thoughts with us in the comments below, especially if you are uh, a Salvadorian member of the Altcoin Buzz Army, I'd love to hear your point of view and your perspective because this, I, I recognize this as a huge development, but I don't have my finger on the pulse of what life is like there for people and what, you know, may be some of the driving incentives to, to get this going. Very interesting, at least to me, I feel, is the fact that this isn't coming from the bottom up. This isn't something that the people are demanding. You're not seeing, you know, revolutions in the streets and people demanding Bitcoin. You're seeing it from the president of the country. So extremely top down. I find that fascinating. That's certainly worth quite a bit more press. And again, don't get me wrong. Some people are covering it. We we're on Yahoo just a moment ago. Al Jazeera here. El Salvador President Bukele wants Bitcoin as legal tender. The move, if approved, would make El Salvador the first country in the world to formally accept cryptocurrency as legal money. Wouldn't that be something? So ask yourselves, guys, you know, say, for example, this were to happen tomorrow, what would be the impact if this were to be approved, if Bitcoin were to be approved as legal tender in El Salvador tomorrow? Is that something that would outpace that would overshadow all the negativity that we've seen from Elon Musk in China? No, honestly, probably not is my answer. But what's up with that? Why do we live in that kind of a world where the positives where the extremely encouraging bits of news are just downplayed in terms of their impact and in terms of their ability to promote positivity, to promote growth in this market, it's kind of unfortunate. I think it's, you know, I've kind of likened it before to the fact that we're still all developing, growing forest creatures in this ecosystem, right? And we're we're foraging and we're trying to, to make a name for ourselves and trying to secure resources. But the result of that is that we're extremely skittish and extremely fearful. We're like uh, foraging, I don't know, squirrels in the forest or something and a twig snaps and we freak out, right? Unfortunately, that is in our nature. Terrific news either way. And another argument, at least in my opinion, to suggest that no, we're not exactly done with this bull market just yet documenting Bitcoin here. Bitcoin today versus past bull market. Let's pull this up and enlarge this particular graph. So what you're seeing here is uh, basically the last few months of Bitcoin in this chart that's mapped against the previous bull market. You'll see that you have an adjusted Y axis uh, that's accounting for the price, which obviously is different across these two bull markets, but we're most importantly kind of baselining this against on the X axis days from having. And as you can see here, we're about uh, 370, 380 days post having, having occurred in May for Bitcoin, for BTC that is, having occurred in May of 2020. So we're just over a year after Bitcoin's having event. And look at that, you know, like despite all the turbulence and despite all the volatility, you have to admit that it's lining up, again, not perfectly, nothing will ever line up perfectly. There's no sets of histories that will ever correlate one to one. But does it ever look like it's roughly following the trajectory of Bitcoin leading up to its 2017 peak? Very interesting. So we find ourselves right here at the moment. And as you can see, in 2017, it took up until, what is that, about 530 or so days, 520, 530 days post having until we really saw a peak for Bitcoin. Uh, and then even a little bit longer for the rest of the altcoin and the rest of the crypto market. So look, I mean, this is nothing as far as concrete evidence. It's just an observation, but an observation from my perspective that would suggest, yeah, we still have probably about 150 days or so to go until at least in terms of a days from having perspective, we can expect a proper peak from Bitcoin. And maybe it'll take longer. Maybe, you know, once we're 500, 550, 600 days after the previous having event in May of 2020, maybe, maybe that won't translate into anything. Maybe it's different this time because we've taken such a major hit, right? 50, 55, 60% um, in the case of Bitcoin, depending on your, your time references. So maybe it's going to take longer. But the point is that Again, taking a look at some of the historical metrics, taking the totality of the available information, there's still a very strong argument to suggest that we may still be in a bull run, albeit an extended one. It may take a little bit longer, but I have no reason to believe that 
we have to wait another four years for new all-time highs? I don't think so. Not my point of view, at least. A little bit of news from Theta here that's been performing pretty well these last uh, few days, actually. Theta underscore network here. Theta, one-click delegated staking now live in the Theta web wallet. With this new feature, you can delegate your Theta to stake to community-run Guardian nodes that have volunteered their nodes for use. You can find all the details in the latest Theta blog. Check that out. All right, members of the Altcoin Buzz Army, it is time for our giveaway. We talked in Friday's video about Elon Musk and his uh, bad behavior. The fact that he's crashing the market again, it's uh, kind of deja vu in the worst possible way, I suppose. Not exactly fun to see. Anyways, uh, as always, guys, in order to participate in these giveaways, to be eligible, number one, of course, you got to like the video. 274 of you like the video, not too bad. Number two, you have to subscribe to Altcoin Buzz News, this channel that you're watching right now. Number three, you have to comment with the letters ETH, ETH, or the word Ethereum. We give away Ethereum, of course. So that's what your comment must contain. Once again, like the video, subscribe to Altcoin Buzz, comment with ETH or Ethereum. 493 comments, very good, but 274 likes. Again, Kind of honor system. I can't go through and check everybody, but you know, honor system. We're asking you guys to both like and comment on the video. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up the URL rather from the video here. Copy that. Go over to raffle dash and select a comment at random. As long as the comment contains those different variables that I mentioned, then uh, then you win. And so potentially the winner of another fifty dollars worth of ETH in today's video is here we go Hamza Douglas. This one great ETH. Hamza, I had a very good friend by that name, actually. Congratulations, Hamza Douglas. You are the winner of $50 worth of Ethereum. Hamza, please go back to Friday's video. So that was this one here. Bad Elon is the Miami conference ruined. Is the Miami Bitcoin conference ruined? Go back to that video, Hamza. Find this comment in particular. Reply to your own comment with the Ethereum address to which you would like us to send you your $50 in ETH. Congratulations, you've won. It's just that easy. As I always say, it's simple. So you may as well throw your hat into the race. That is it for today, members of the Altcoin Buzz Army. Do be sure you're following us on all the regular social media channels. Keep checking back into altcoinbuzz.io for all the latest. Like, subscribe, share, hit the bell to receive notifications if you enjoyed today's video. Best of luck, of course, if you choose to invest, although none of this is financial advice. You know that already. Stay safe. Have a great Sunday, a great tail end to your weekend. And as always, we do hope to see you again soon in our next video. Take care.